NFTs are here to stay. In fact, they're revolutionizing the art world, the gaming space, and the collector's, well, collections. Now that everyone's entering the NFT space happily and jumping on sites like OpenSea, not to mention playing NFT play-to-earn games that make them very wealthy indeed, there are a few people out there who are still not sure what they can do to get involved. Many projects are having to resort to creating whitelists to be able to get involved. But what constitutes a whitelist? How hard is it to get onto one? And what does this mean for your future involvement in the NFT space? Well, as always, guys, I'm going to be answering these series of questions as well as a whole lot more. So make sure you don't go anywhere for a while as I prepare to take you through the news, the rumors, basically everything you need to know to ensure that you have all the best info all the time. And please, if you will, subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications. That way you get a nice little ping every time there's a new upload and I've got some stuff to tell you that you don't want to miss. All right, y'all done subscribing? Fantastic. Let's go ahead and get started. So let's do a brief recap, just in case you came here still wondering, what's an NFT? All right, so NFTs are basically digital assets, such as works of art, animation, music, video footage, or perhaps something like even a domain name that's been turned into a token on the blockchain, a bit like a cryptocurrency token. The difference, of course, is that these tokens are non-fungible like currency is. With that strange word, meaning something that can be interchanged for an equivalent amount of value or another token of identical value and meaning. NFTs are non-fungible tokens, meaning that they're totally one of a kind. And this is provable by using the infallible nature of smart contracts that cannot be duplicated and provide indisputable proof of validity, authenticity, and ownership over an NFT. In short, even if you screenshot an NFT and make it your Facebook profile picture, you still don't own the Mona Lisa. You get it? Good. NFTs have shot to meteoric popularity in the last couple of years, and they're now even beginning to crack into the lexicon of even the Joe Bloggs normies out there. So you know that they're not going anywhere. Now, those people who have made it their priority to be on the right platforms at the right time to snap up brand new collections of NFTs are seriously looking at making some real wealth, and everyone is trying to figure out how they're doing it. Well, when a new collection is going live, there are now going to be so many people that are waiting there to snipe that the creators are beginning to realize that they need to offer whitelist tech to stop just anyone from wafting by and grabbing all the best of the collection. Here's an interesting statistic. According to Chain Analysis, users who make the whitelist and later sell their newly minted NFTs gain a profit 75.7% .7 of the time. In contrast, people who aren't whitelisted only profit 20.8% of the time. That's no small amount of difference. So then what does a whitelist mean in terms of NFTs? Well, in essence, an NFT whitelist is a list of individuals who are able to mint new NFTs without having to get involved in a public mint. By creating a whitelist, you're able to avoid annoying things like gas wars. Gas wars are what happens when you lose Ether to gas prices because of the insane amount of people buying the NFTs at the exact same time on the still currently very expensive Ethereum blockchain. Another benefit for the people releasing the line of NFTs is that they're able to reward the people who have really contributed to the project, as opposed to snipers, who are just there to do a quick flip and make a profit. So how do you, the guy or gal who's trying to get involved in the NFT project, get on the whitelist for that project? Well, the first thing you need to do is to get onto a launchpad. Some NFT collections that come out are actually acting as launchpads for other NFT collections to release. If this needs a little more explanation, just simply look at the Doge Pound NFT collection. This has turned into not just a place for the Doge-related NFTs to launch, but now much more of the platform for other NFT collections to get into. Other platforms offer whitelist spots to members of other NFT communities, such as when Interfaces gifted 100 whitelist spots to members of the Dead Fellas community. So if you were a holder of a Dead Fellas NFT, you would have a chance at being whitelisted for the minting of Interfaces. Another good way to get onto a whitelist is to buy previously launched NFTs by the people who are releasing new NFT collections. So if an NFT creator or team has previously launched a line of NFTs and now are moving on to launch a new line of NFTs, owning one or more of their previous line could see you get an instant whitelisted status when it comes to the minting of the new line of NFTs. Look at the Clone X NFT collection by Artifact Studios. If you didn't know already, Artifact has launched other collections of NFTs before this latest run. And the people who already own the NFTs that Artifact previously launched were invited to be part of the whitelist and get a good look at the new collection before the minting went public. That's a great way to get the edge on the absolutely vast amount of competition that's currently out there when it comes to the minting and launching of NFTs. This has proven to be a very successful way of doing things for both creators and collectors of NFTs over the last couple of years. You might say that this is just nepotism, and it is, but then again, there are so many people out there who are looking to make a quick buck who are ruining NFTs for everyone. You'd be hard-pressed to convince people that nepotism isn't the right way in some of these cases. At least you're guaranteed that the people on the platform for the Mint are actual legitimate NFT holders. Participation is another way that you can get yourself whitelisted. 
Now, I know that sounds like a lot of work, and it absolutely is, considering that this is an organic way of getting whitelisted. Basically, you need to join the Discord and participate. That's it. No shortcuts, no cheats, no tricks. Just be part of their fellowship and discuss the project, give feedback, and dedicate a lot of your time. You're surely to get noticed eventually. You can participate in the art, or perhaps the marketing. Maybe you can get involved in games or giveaways too. But basically, yes, join the fellowship or community if you like, and get right involved in participating, adding benefit to the NFT project's community, thereby adding value overall. For example, the latest line of monkey-based NFTs that will launch soon is called HAPE. And the HAPE whitelist, or HAPE list, can be joined if you produced some art, music, poetry, food, or anything else that represents HAPE. At the very least, you need to be a member of the server, behaving respectfully to the other users and participating in the whole thing. Now, of course, the next way that you can easily get onto a whitelist is to start being a content creator for the NFT space. If you start creating content for NFTs, you're going to find that, that opportunities from other NFT creators are going to come right along, looking for cross-promotion of all sorts. If you're a YouTuber, or a TikToker, or an Instagrammer, or maybe just someone who lives on Twitter all day long or whatever, you can get whitelist spots just by being associated with a particular set of NFTs, and you can then make some serious money this way. Just remember that you have to be highly supportive and help promote the NFTs to get on the whitelists. But the rewards could seriously help you out, as you help to get more and more eyes on the NFT collections. So now maybe you're beginning to understand the benefits of being on the whitelist. But to quickly recap, when collections of NFTs come out, if you're interested in getting yourself the best and the most early access available to those NFTs before the flippers and opportunists get their chance to, then you're going to have to do one or a few things, including supporting the community of the NFT line by participating in that very community, or perhaps just supporting the creators or discussing NFTs on Discord, or maybe you could purchase some of the earlier NFTs that were previously made by the same creator or creative team. You should absolutely make sure that you are present on those NFT launch pads so that you don't miss out on the minting of the new line. And last but not least, you can use whatever platform or following you already have, whether on social media or YouTube or what have you, to promote the line of NFTs in exchange for being added to the whitelist, in much the same way as YouTubers get promotions from interested parties. So if you can do any of these things, maybe even all of them, then your chances of being added to new NFT collections whitelist increases dramatically which means that you're going to have a much better chance at getting your hands on some rare and very valuable NFTs without having to fight off rivals during the public mint. It certainly is well worth considering. But what do you guys think about the concept of getting yourself onto an NFT whitelist? Do you think it's something that you'll try to do yourself? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, please subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications so that you're always in the know when it comes to some news, rumors, or tips that can possibly help you amass a fortune. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.